that God has actually chosen the woman. He has chosen Mother Tynetta to be an example, and one of the examples, because we know that we as human beings, we have to see other human beings in order to model our lives or pattern our lives right. after. Right. So we're not here to worship Mother Tynetta. We don't expect her to levitate or do anything unnatural, but we do expect to learn by watching an example that God chose for us. As we say that, and I see that she's entering the room now, all praise is due to Allah, we want you to stand and to recognize our mother. My Life's Journey Traveling with the Wise Men. And she has also written a book, The Million Man March, Home Study Guide and Souvenir Book. The Woman in Islam Educational Series 1, 2, and 3. And such thought-provoking taped lectures as The Passing of Princess Diana and Mother Teresa and What It Means to the World. Mother Tynetta also developed presentations around the theme, music, color, and medicine, with productions in Phoenix, Arizona, and Los Angeles, California in the late 80s. We also know that Mother Tynetta Muhammad was not one that was formally trained, but we can see what a God-inspired life it can produce creativity once again within the black woman once she is in that state of mind of heaven, as we talked about. That this is a condition of mind. And once we are at peace with self and others, then we will be able to produce the music, the fine music that is on a higher level, that will take our minds to a new realm. And we will be able to once again write books that will inspire others on into the future. So without delay, brothers and sisters, I would like for you to help me to receive the mother of the faithful, Mother Tanya. savage place on the continent, the most uncivilized place right. on this, in the whole world. Right. Right. And we only have to read and hear the headlines today to know that that is 100% true. The right. well, question is, why would God come to the wilderness, to a savage place? Because he was looking for the lost and of his family's house, and we were the ones, the ex-slaves. 
We forever think a lot what is coming, and we're raising one in our midst who could continue to guide us out of this hell and this savage condition to meet with the God again. And that great one was the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, who has been exalted through his divine work to that most exalted place that Allah has promised him to be the exalted. And we forever thank Almighty God Allah for his coming, for his blessing us with this opportunity to evolve from savagery into divine. We thank them so much for raising one still from among the classroom of God, the best of the students in that classroom of God, to continue to carry us through our evolution and our growth until we reach the other side. And that great one is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan. You know, I wanted to say something here before I get into some of the many notes and many books I never usually come up to the roster with Newsweek, <laughs> um, Galactic Culture, Time Ship uh, 2013. How to give birth to a god. Study guide number 19. The supreme wisdom lessons. Our savior has arrived. And a book written by a very advanced um, minister, Gabri Anna, from Washington, D.C., called The Superior Aspects of Women. Don't get afraid. And of course, the best of them all, the Holy Quran. Right. So, I said to my sister, uh, Mother Evelyn, on the way over, I said, my gosh, I said, I was so excited this morning when I woke up and knew that we got through last night <laughs> that I had to take a deep breath and thank Mama, first of all, for all of you and your wonderful support of the entire event that took place on the celebration of womanhood, which is really a celebration of mother, which is a celebration of all women not only in America, but throughout the world. So in continuing on that subject, I got so excited that I went into the Bible, into the Quran, every book, every text that I had, and I said, well, maybe Allah will guide me to maybe leave the books and go right to the heart of the matter. But we always have to prepare ourselves, and if we're students, we do generally carry a lot of books. <laughs> and we're check records. What we have learned and keeping up with that which is contemporary, so that our expression of the divine teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad is progressive. That we don't get stuck in the past and can't go forward in the present moment. Because if we get stuck in the past, it may not be beneficial to you and I, because we're always on the path of evolution change and development, is that right? Always moving from one state into a new state so that it is written, it will be true, that when he comes, he would make all things new. Now, I recall that in 1974, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad dictated one of his uh, last articles for the final for the Muhammad's Peace newspaper uh, to me, I was very, Blessed to receive, I had never been given an article from him dictated to go to the newspaper. And I remember the title of that article, and it began to make me remember something as we are traveling with the wise man, always the man of God. And we have to remember sometimes we get moving on a track and we don't give ourselves time to stop and reflect. Is that right? The Holy Quran tells us that we should meditate lying down, when we're inclined on a couch, when we're sitting, is that right? When we're walking, whatever we do, so that there is no crowding in of any other influence, but that which is the almighty divine, because in reality, he is the master teacher. And he can take us on this path to evolution and growth more easily if we meditate on him. So the article title was, 
the old world going out and the new world coming in. That was within one year to the departure of the Honorable Eliza Muhammad in 1975, and he dictated that article in the neighboring country of Mexico. And a lot of people have wondered why would the Honorable Elijah Muhammad move to Mexico? What is the secret, if we want to say it, connection between that move from the United States of America with the capital in uh, Chicago to a residence in Phoenix, Arizona, and then moving south across the border? What we learn in this period of time from witnesses of Native American members of the Hopi, the Navajo, also I'm thinking the Apache, that they have suddenly emerged in the last several years, bearing witness that they remember the Honorable Elijah Muhammad making personal contact with Indian elders and chiefs, and what we would call shamans and medicine men, the elders of the tribe. He would do it without announcement. He was always so much in advance of where we were able to go. Is that true? And he was always planning for our future. But if we are ungrateful for Allah's blessings, for sending to us messengers, is that right? A voice that will speak to our needs then we will be categorized like the people we read in the Holy Quran and the Bible, who were ungrateful for the presence of these special servants who appear like human beings, and that's where we make our mistake. We say, oh, that's just another man. That's just a common person. He goes about in the marketplace. He buys food, he eats, he drinks. Is that right? He marries, he has family. Is that right? So then in the mind of the person traveling with the wise man, it produces problems. Because we can't outthink or outmove the wise man. So in our ignorance, we begin to murmur. And that is exactly the condition that Moses and Aaron had when they were trying to deliver the children of Israel. Is that right? Every time that they even saw the miracle, Wow, wasn't that fantastic? That was wonderful. Look what our God is doing for us. Within months, they forgot the miracle that God had performed for them. And they begin to complain about every little thing. When he got them out of the country in which they were enslaved, they begin to murmur and say, why have you brought us out here to die in the wilderness, right? If, for example, we were to leave America and go into any one of the countries that we visited with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan on the World Friendship Tour, with the exception of a few very, very, very advanced and modern city style, we wouldn't be able to survive. Is that true? But he told us that right here in America, we were going to have to learn how to survive. Because there may be a time when well, we won't have modern electricity. There will be a time when our water will be so polluted that if we haven't saved water in our homes to drink, we're out of luck. He told us to store food and provision for a certain time of an emergency, didn't he? That we would have supplies that would last us from six months to a year. But we hear these things but our attraction to the world of sport and play puts impediments in the thinking of our minds and prevents us from seeing and studying Almighty God's divine plan. So I'm giving this as a, a brief interlude to the subject that we want to carry further into discussion, and that is the Exodus program. To exodus does not mean <clears throat> getting a fast ball. It doesn't mean that we're going to get rich quick. It means that we have to apply 
with every bit of energy, with every bit of thought. <clears throat> the spiritual keys that we were given. And that if we utilize and apply the spiritual keys and then fasten to that training and education, then we will be able to make a way for ourselves. In other words, we have to get out of the, the spooky mentality of a heaven high up in the sky. Will you wait for that mystery God to bring you food, clothing, and a home? We were taught about that mystery God. And we're in hell, and we're still in hell. Is that right? We have not made any movement, no motion, since the Savior came. It's very serious. We're still divided in our communities. We're still uh, overly critical about everything we attempt to do. We boycott our own businesses. We turn aside from the problems of our neighbors. We have lost the human touch in all of our relationships. And if mother loses the human touch, then we're truly lost forever. We were given histories about the moon. People say, well, that's too far back. We don't have to talk about the moon. That was 66 trillion years ago. And we have histories that take us back to the making of the sun. That's 76 trillion years ago. That's really far back. And most people say, what is why is it necessary to study all those ancient histories, because the science of the divine creation and the making up of our stellar system and galaxies of stars is made up of the very same material that produced the conditions for which human beings were also created. And the more we know, about the origin of creation, the better able we are to perfect that which we are in. Okay? So, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad lives in 1975, and the great test begins. Do you think that he did not know what was going to happen to his nation upon his departure? Do you think that he just was sick and elderly and didn't have the mind to carry on any further, and that maybe a younger person was required to carry the baton. Those are thoughts that I'm just putting out there. But you know that Moses was 120 years old, already. and the other prophets, like Methuselah, was a thousand years old. But they were divinely directed and they were divinely guided through the divine work and plan of Almighty God. I started out by saying, why do you think that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad dictated that article, and this is what I have now come to see, why would he dictate an article like that outside of America in another country. What part does Mexico have to play in the resurrection of our people? These are questions that I'm putting there for, for you to study. What is the significance of the move from Chicago to Phoenix, Arizona? What is the sign of the desert? Why in a desert, a deserted place, we would say, so hot, that people don't even want to live there, animals dropping dead. You see, God, in his way, tests us in the environment in which we live. He tests us in our ability to understand why we have to go through this struggle and travail. And do you know that the prophets only saw a small number that would be able to survive.
that we'll be able to get through to the other side. Right. But we have it in our writings from the master that the messenger and his laborers have worked night and day for a certain period of years. Is that right? Now that certain period of years has gone into 68 years. And we have two more years less before we reach the end of this century and the beginning of the 21st century. So if we have been deprived of life, how will we restore that life, which is the sign of the moon? When that explosion took place, the water fell from that part of the moon as the first uh, NASA explorers and astronauts found out when they landed on the moon in 1969 in July of that year. They found that the rocks on the moon bore witness to their origin on this earth. And ever since they have discovered this scientific fact, they have been exploring all of the planets of our galaxy, is that right? Where do you think that they got that idea from? It is due to the fact that they have destroyed the planet on which we live through experimentation. So they're seeking out into the galaxy in order to study how they can moon base or planet base move out of this one that's about ready to destroy itself because of the wickedness of what men's hands have wrought. And I'm not making a criticism exactly of this kind of president because I don't have anything to do, nor do we, in knowing what goes on in the White House, let alone sleeping in the bedroom of President Abraham Lincoln. Okay. However, there is a scripture in the Bible that speaks about a certain king called Nebuchadnezzar. And he literally lost it. And he became like a beast. And Nebuchadnezzar, if you look at it at the current moment, questions have been raised as to why would he recklessly and carelessly drop bombs on Africa. That's right. In the Sudan. And Afghanistan. And remember the words of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan. This year, Savior's Day, he said he had the vision, 1985, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad appeared to him only through the voice that he recognized like a bell, a clear bell of his voice. And he told him that America and the Joint Chiefs of Staff were planning a war somewhere on the planet, but he didn't tell him exactly where. So he took us through these steps. He said first he thought it was Libya, right? And he saw the sign of the bombings in Libya because he had just gotten out before the bombings took place. And then, of course, we had the Persian Gulf. All of these areas are Islamic countries, is that right? Now we have Afghanistan, which I know nothing about the what do they call it, the Taliban movement, because we were instructed, and I want everybody to get this clear, that the Muslims cannot be terrorized, nor will we be called terrorists. We were taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad never to carry any weapon and to search everyone who comes in for weapons or any object that would interfere with the worship of the one God. We are the only people in the entire world who has been taught the reality of God. 99% of the Islamic world and scholars of mostly all of the religions Believe that God is a speaker. 
Come on. But the science is proving that God is a reality in both the spiritual and the physical sense. Why would God send an angel to the prophet Muhammad instructing him to read? To read a book. Spooks don't read books. identify with a language. Spook is a word that was used so that Satan could rule by making you think that God is somewhere invisible, bringing all of this reality into our sphere while he's making himself rich off of whose labor? Black, brown, red, yellow, all of the original people have been the servants of an invisible Satan that we identify as the white man. Not because he's white, that has nothing to do with skin color, but it has to do with the characteristics of a beast that is identified in the scripture as being Satan. The deceiver. Satan, the liar. What do you have going on right now in the White House? A condemnation because of a lie that could cause impeachment of a president. Is that true? So it is not only an attack against a man, but one man had to take the brunt for a whole people and a whole nation that reflect that same mentality as the leader of the United States of America. And he is counting on the fact that the wide percentage of the people being polled are just as wicked and deceiving and lying as you Now maybe I'm kind of going off my subject, but we are talking about the Exodus, right? And we are given guidelines from Master Farrar Muhammad and the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in our lessons that tell us that the root of this world was to deceive the righteous. Right, right, right. Whether they're Muslims or Christians or even some Jewish people and community, everybody doesn't know the secret of who God is or who the devil is. And we cannot teach the devil in an emotional way. We have to teach the science of the reality of God and the science of the reality of the devil. And now we're brought back to you and me. It is the black man and the black woman who are the original people. But inside the original people, we have a problem. And that problem took evolution, an evolutionary process, in order to manifest the defect that was within the original people. So we cannot talk about the white man and what he's doing unless we talk about the black man and the black woman and find out what was wrong with us. Now look at our condition today. We are religious people, spiritual people, is that right? Whether we're in the church or the synagogue or, or in the mosques. By nature, we are like that, is that true? But look at our condition as spiritual people. We're just like Satan. We argue, we fight, we make mockery of one another, we threaten to kill and kill one another, is that right? So this devil did a wonderful job in manifesting the trouble that is really within us. And until we turn to a righteous guide, and that righteous guide cannot just be an ordinary person. In reality, brothers and sisters, the righteous guide, the righteous guide, the original righteous guide is God himself. 
when God visited America, he came under a disguise. He came under the disguise of the name of the person that the world has been looking for, that is the Messiah, Christ. So we, the nation of Islam, are very unusual people to the world, right? We are saying we are Muslims, we recite the Holy Quran, but at the same time, we are also talking like Christians. So it's a little confusing to people. They say, well, why are they talking so much about Jesus and Christ and the Messiah and Mary? And what is this? Well, I got to tell you something. Prophet Muhammad talked about Jesus too. That's right. He pointed his community to look to the future, to see the sign of this figure, Jesus Christ, as returning at the end of the world. At the end of the world. At the end. So there really should be a council formed, as the Honorable Minister Farrakhan has called for that kind of uh, council between Christians, Muslims, and Jews. And we may find that there is no difference between us because we all are admitting that the reality of God is the number one study that should be at the center of all religious people, whether they are in America or any place in the world. Because if your religion would save you, we would be saved. If we say we are Muslims and we say we follow the religion of Islam, that does not say that we are saved. And if you say you're a Christian and you follow the religion of Christianity, that's not going to save you. And if you say you are a Jew and you follow the Jewish religion, that is not going to save you. Because if you have taken your religion, as a prop for your dirty practice. Oh, then you cannot find the favor of all my God. If we all could honestly stand up and take away all the names of the religion, Christianity, Islam, Judaism, Buddhism, Hinduism, take away all of the names. And if I just started talking to you, even today from this restaurant, and all I talked about was Allah. Allah. The beauty of Allah. You would start in your head, gosh, I wonder why they're not, she's not talking about Muhammad. Why she's not talking about uh, the great prophets that came before. Well, I'll tell you why. The Quran answers it. It says that when Allah's name alone is mentioned, the people get upset. Right. But if you add another name to the name of Allah, then they're done. Right. And you know why? Because we don't have a full appreciation of who we are. Do you understand? Yes, At the root of it is you think that you have to depend upon someone outside of yourself to to reveal God to you. And in one instance, that is true. In one instance, that is true. But you don't want to beat the stick on the old horse because the old horse doesn't want to carry a weak body on his back. Yeah. He wants us to grow up yeah. at a certain state, see, and to come into a higher knowledge of who you are. That's why the Master came. He said, I come on the basis of the knowledge of God and the knowledge of self. So we have to grow up by stages of evolution to know who we are in order to recognize God. So when I said last evening that the kingdom of God begins in you, it's the same thing that Jesus said to his disciples. They wanted him to tell them when will the kingdom of God begin? When? When? And he said, the kingdom of God begins in you, and they were confounded, right? Mm -hmm. They didn't understand what he said. Right. See? God doesn't really need us, but we That's need right. him. That's right. And if 
we give too much praise and honor to others and give little attention to God, then we have really strayed our way. Yeah. I'll give you an example. How many of us pray to God five and seven times a day? How many of us remember who is God and are willing to give our lives for God? But we say, I will give my life for you. I will take the bullet for you. About any other individual. But you really can't do that unless you are rooted in Allah. Come on, right. And every person that you would give their, your life for has to be rooted in Allah. Is yes, that right? right? Yes, right. Otherwise, our life is in vain. Right. Wow. I don't know why I'm going this way. I think I do. <laughs> We're talking right. about Exodus. We're trying to come out of an old mind and come into the new mind so that God becomes a reality in our lives so that we can begin to be a harmonious and beautiful people who love the name of God. You remember when Moses was trying to take the children of Israel out of Egypt, he brought to them a new name for God, a name unknown to them, a name that they had never heard before. Is that right? He was called before the God, the Most High, the Almighty, all of the different names. But he was never known by the name Jehovah. Is that true? So when he came to them with that name, he was pricking their memory to remember something that they had lost. The name Allah, when we say Allah, do you know what we're saying? We're saying all of us are related to Allah by a law. Allah is a law. And if you write the name Allah, you will begin with Aleph and then Lam, Lam, Ha. Is that true? Now, if you can visualize that, I didn't call for the blackboard, but if you can visualize that, you will see that the Aleph is like the number one. That's right. Is that right? Yes, ma'am. And then you go on a certain movement here, yes. a cycle of movement, and you end up going upright again. Yes. And at the end, you have a little circle, which is another number. Yes. That number is nine. So you have 19. God's signature actually written in the Arabic name. Allah. Oh, yeah. And you have it reversed, you have 91, which is the sun, mm. the source of life for our solar system and our galaxy. So in this day of the celebration of womanhood, of mother, it is very important that women study the nature of the God within. That's right. Because we cannot nurture and bring into perfection a new world civilization until we're intimately involved with that one God directing and guiding every day of our lives. Yes. So the trouble that was in us in the beginning is required now that women be properly trained and guided into the knowledge of God so that we can nurture and bring into perfection from the womb of life, not ordinary men, but gods. How to give birth to God. Yes. By the honorable minister. And I'm going to read what he says here. Just one word. He says, I pray that Allah will bless our women and girls, that they will see their responsibility to make a better future by making better men. You cannot make better men unless you produce them from your womb. You must be wise women and not foolish women. Sisters, you must give yourself to the study of knowledge. You must cut out the frivolity. It is all right to dance or to party, but you cannot be a frivolous woman partying all the time, finger popping, shaking, and so on. 
You've got to be more dignified than this if you are going to bring a child of consequence on this earth. You become married in righteous conduct, you will produce a Jesus, a little Messiah and a savior of the world. It is time for all women to start thinking like this. I do not mean for you to run out and say, well now, it is time for me to have a little Jesus. <laughs> I do not want you to do this. I want you to be righteous. Do not do anything in the name of righteousness with a wicked look to it. Yes. See what I'm saying? Yes. So going back to the Savior, why did he come and disappear? Yes, he was persecuted. Yes, he had to take flight. All of that is true. That's prophetically sound, prophetically true. But if he were to remain longer and his identity were to be made known, we would be found worshiping at his feet. He did not want us to worship his flesh. He came as a perfect emanation of the Spirit of God in his person, having more knowledge of divine than anyone who had yes. been born before him. He was born with a light from the almighty creator in the beginning of the heavens and earth. And in the searching of his soul, he saw what went wrong. And he came to correct what went on in the darkness of space. Where it says that God or man was made in haste, says the Holy Quran. Remember, it's very difficult to come from nothing into something. Somewhere along the line, the fractal mathematics may not be 100% correct. And if the fractal mathematics is not conceived in a perfect form, then you will have a lopsided way of coming out of darkness into the world, into the light. But the woman, here we go, was there when God was making himself up, out of nothing, but something was there, okay? And the honorable Elijah Muhammad puts it this way, he said a brother sitting at the dinner table and asked him to give him a, a historical track on the origin of the woman. He said, when was the woman made? Because you know, we have the moon history, right? And it says that the cycle yeah. of the woman is compared to the moon having lost her water. But this man, or brother, asked young Elijah Muhammad, said, as far back as the man goes, she was there. Then he asked again, he said, but I mean, is there some kind of chronological way that you cannot fix to her birth? And he repeated again, he said, as far back as the man goes, she was there. So in the poem that I wrote for last evening's performance, I had those words of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad in my mind that inspired me to write that particular poem. So if the woman was there, we have to go a little bit deeper. Now, the space is called what? A womb. That means that in the womb is darkness, but yet something of matter or electricity is there. But we don't have the brain power to calculate on how to put all of that material together to produce a form. So we have to study some of these. We have to know the atom. We have to know electricity. We have to study science to make our religion real. We can no longer remain on a theological time frame nor interpret scripture the way that we have been interpreting it. If you don't bring science into your religion, Newsweek, science, from God. They have a quote here from Einstein. Everybody knows Mr. Einstein? Albert Einstein. He had groundbreaking theories of relativity. Uh, reject Newton's carefully ordered universe, and quote, 
science. This is Einstein. Science without religion is lame. Religion without science is blind. Now these are scientists that do the thing that are, are studying physics and quantum physics, pulsars, and astronomy, but they're looking for what the Honorable Elijah Muhammad has been teaching us. That's, right. That's what the magicians did under Pharaoh. They said when Moses defeated them in their arguments, he defeated the magicians, right? Right. They threw down, right. and he won the argument. Then they said he called his uh, Haman or somebody, right? He called Haman, his scientists, and he said, "Build me a uh, tower so that I can take a peek into the heavens and see if this God that yeah. Moses is talking about exists." So what is happening today? The Honorable Elijah Muhammad said. That Almighty God Allah is allowing the present civilization and their scientists to probe out into outer space so that they can take a peek into the heavens. That's right. And every time that they take a peek, they come back with something. That's right. They come back confirming the teachings of the right. Honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yes, right. They come back. Telling us that, uh oh, we heard through our radio astronomy some beeps out there. Yeah. And they say, oh, there must be extraterrestrials. Extraterrestrials. Well, we don't use that kind of language. That's right. In Islam, as taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, everything is real. That's right. There is a base of a civilization that may not be exactly like ours, but we never call them extraterrestrials. They are a civilization on Mars. There is, I should put it that way, civilization on Mars. And why are they probing around Mars after they heard the Honorable Elijah Muhammad say that for 44 years? Then broke into the mosque in Detroit and stole all our literature right. in the early 30s. That's right. Stole all of the pictures of this great wheel in a wheel, Ezekiel's wheel. Right. So I don't want our visitors to take Islam teaching from the mosques of Islam, of the nation of Islam, don't take it just for foolishness. This is a teaching to save all of our lives. We were like you, visiting the mosque of Islam. And that truth tickled our ear because we had never heard that kind of wisdom being taught before, whether among black people or any other people. It is a wisdom, believe me, that the Caucasian, or America in particular, and the world in general, has been studying our assignment right. that was given to us to advance themselves in the right. knowledge of atoms and how they work. Yeah. The explosion down to the tiniest little quark or beyond. Is that right? Uh, that's right. But we put these lessons, supreme wisdom, behind our back. Right. We say, oh, we don't need that for today. That was for them. And then in the current article of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan, he mentions how the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told them that one day they will say his teachings was for them. Right. Not them. Not them. Isn't that something? So as we walk with the wise man, it's not very easy. Because he takes us in ways that we don't understand. But he takes us in the best ways. That's right. But these ways have to be studied and understood that when you are dealing with a wise man, there are many, many things that you will never understand. But our obedience is being called. Because he's trying to take you not to himself. He's trying to take you to a deeper understanding of the God that controls and rules our lives. So through his example and the way that he goes, he is getting us into high ground. Remember the movie um, Deep Impact? They had to run and get into high ground yeah. to avoid this mana 100 feet tidal wave from immersing the land. They had to take high ground. Yeah. We had to take high ground right. with the wise man. Everything that we see, 
that's happening to this planet is a consequence of the wickedness that has been practiced on this planet right. for thousands and thousands of years. Nothing is spooky. That's right. That's right. Even when it is written that this angel of the seven angels in the book of Revelation, uh, they drop a star called right. Wormwood. Right? Yeah. And then all of a sudden the fish died and blood that's was right. on the land. And then another angel caused uh, hornets and other kind of insects to come locusts, etc., to come and eat up the grain, eat up the fruit, and maybe eat up right. people in a minute. That's right. That's right. We have all this going on. Heat, so intense, that has never been registered before yeah. in the history. Now they're talking just again this morning about La Nina. After El Nino wrecked terror, now here comes La Nina. So we have the masculine, and the feminine side of Almighty God of oh, rage against the wicked and the rich. Yes. The temperatures here at the Pacific Ocean were rising so high to heat oh. and devastating America and many parts of the world with unheard of floods, yeah. oh, rains, yeah. Yeah. disasters. Then, right behind El Nino, La Nina cools the water down. Yeah, okay. it's, it's cool. Cools the water down, but the result is going to be intensity of droughts. That's right. Intensity of destroying the bed bath, uh, food bath, the right. mm -hmm. So the Honorable Elijah Muhammad again said that there was going to come a great famine. And everybody said, ooh, a great famine, but America looks so well off. She is the land of plenty, right? She has everything. But now the prices will start going up on produce that we cannot afford to buy. So then he brought us manna from heaven. He said, eat that little post called the Navy Bean. The Navy Bean is our survival kit. And if we can take that bean and master how it is to be made as the best source of protein for us on this sacred journey, getting to the other side. I've heard many people say, I'm tired of being food. I can't eat bean soup anymore. Okay? And remember, the Israelites started murmuring again. They said, Moses, we're dissatisfied. We want some lentils. We want some leeks. We want some onions. We want, you know, all of these things. And he was trying to get them to survive off of their people. So we have many, many, many problems to work out. We can come to the mosque, we can come to the church, we can go anywhere we want for wisdom. But as long as we contend ourselves with lip service and not putting that into practice, then we're falling short of our duty, whether we're Christians, Muslims, or Jews. So the object of the Exodus program, as indicated by our representative of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, by the Minister Farrakhan, is first of all, it is an exodus out of the mind of our enemies who have captured us. Yes. And the exodus is to change the mind that we're in, okay, into the mind of God. Now I'm going to read something. I really didn't know I was going to read all of this. Our Savior has arrived. Yes, ma'am. 1974. He speaks of this great master who came to deliver his people under the hard taskmasters of hell. He makes all things new. He teaches us that he could use nothing of the old world, and that after the removal of the old world, he is to bring about the new world. Allah God does not want the old God to think that he is weak in wisdom and knowledge and power to bring something altogether new without using their old wicked material. Now this God that is being referenced here is Satan. Satan is a God. Satan has ruled the original people for 6,000 years. So that is the God that's referring to, not to the God, the originator of the heavens and the earth. He said, this is like the creation of us. In the beginning, the God who created us had no material to use to begin a creation. He had only himself. 
Therefore, out of the darkness and the thoughtless and invisible, he brought out the visible vision and thought and idea. He made a brain which had the power to cover the sphere of our thinking and to produce from that thought what image or vision that the brain cells could conceive. These things at that time were all new. There was no plan in the universe except his. This is our father, the black man, the maker. It is very important sometimes for us to bring out our books. Because sometimes we can start walking in one direction and it's easy to forget. The basis of our teaching is the reality of God. And that reality of God doesn't stop by looking at an outside figure. That's right. It starts by you emulating and becoming absorbed in the wisdom of that one who is charting our course to safety and bringing that reality within harmony of ourselves. Yeah. When I say the word harmony, I'm thinking one more thought that I'm going to share with you on this Exodus program. I made a statement that in reality, the Exodus program began when Master Farrar Muhammad came yeah. in 1930. The beginning of our exodus out but it has taken us long years like the rebellious children of israel right. to get out because there was an easy way out that could have happened in less amount of time but because of the grumbling and the dissatisfaction right. of the children of israel they limited themselves right. from making the right move at the right time so god couldn't wait forever so he took their children and right. left the elders to die in the wilderness because they couldn't see. They didn't have the vision. They didn't have the faith. They didn't want to go along with the man of God who was delivering them from the worst enemy that they ever had in the history of the universities of Islam. They were to be the new beacon of light, the new institutions for the training of our children with our own teachers and with our own supreme wisdom. So don't play cheap. The structure and the courses of study that was designed for our children. But what has happened is that we have brought in teachers from the world who have this world's education are trying to mix water with oil. Now we've got to purify and get that purity back and guide ourselves out of this condition. Do you know the kind of studies that were set up or are set up in the University of Islam and we will follow them? Courses on astronomy. Not for advanced classes, but with our little babies in kindergarten. The national flag of Islam is for all of us. It represents light, the sun, the moon, and the star. That is not just a banner that is used to show power. That is to teach you and I that our origin and our root comes from the same source that produced the sun, that produced the moon, that produced the stars. That should not be a foreign subject to us. That is not a difficult subject. The rudiments of the mastery of astronomy is mathematics. So the basis of our study is, is mathematics. Yeah. So what's wrong with these subjects? This is where America is failing. That's right. She's way below the level That's right. of the world in science That's right. and mathematics. That's right. And now she's ill, she's lit, not literate even in her own language. Yeah. Foreigners can master her language of English better than she can. Right, right. And the Honorable Elijah Muhammad said the fall of American educational system is a sign of the fall of this country. Right. Because if you can't hold your children together and guide them with the vision to make and create new ideas and something new, then you don't have a future. So the University of Islam is the study of the universe. Everything that makes up the universe, and it's not just the moon and the sun and the stars, but we're a planet in that universe, and we have to study Earth sciences. 
the epistemic biology. We have to study all of these things that our ancient foreparents knew so very well, but we were hit in the head, carried across the, the, the waters and buried over here in the West. And America, just as she is doing now from the teachings of the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, trying to figure a way out that they can survive. And maybe they can if they hear Jonah. That's right. Maybe ancient Nineveh can be saved as well. But I think it's going to be a hard uphill battle for America to admit her wrong. If she can do it, then that's all in the hands of Allah. We don't have anything to do with that. But going back to concluding this lecture with you this afternoon, I just wanted to share with you how happy I am, thankful I am to Almighty God Allah that I can feel a new spiritual consciousness, a new spiritual awakening among our people. And that is the fulfillment of prophecy that God said that He would take charge in the last day. Right. That He would make His Spirit to fall upon the people. Yeah. And that our people will speak in the tongues of God, the language of God, the Spirit of God. And we just have an opportunity, those who are the new converts to Islam, who are the students in God's but if we don't come up to the standard of this wisdom, and it doesn't just mean knowing the books. It means very simple things like being brothers and sisters. It means simple things like loving each other. It means simple things like criticism and respect, concern, caring for one another. It's these little small things. And you know, when you go to school, the academicians test you in two areas of your development, right? right? You can have the highest scores in mathematics and science and astronomy and engineering, etc. But you may not be the one that gets the job. That's right. Because they look at your behavior, That's right. <laughs> your conduct. Is that right? Right, right, right? They see that you are absent yeah. so many times. Yeah. They thought that you were so smart that you didn't have to go to class. So you started cheating on the class, and you thought, well, as long as I get the score, I'll get the credits in. Is that right? That's right. Okay, I don't have to be present. I can come in when I want to. I can be tardy. I can miss days. But all of that was being registered along with that other score. That's right. And then maybe you start getting so arrogant that you get abusive, you know? Yeah. Abusive with people, abusive with others, and say, well, I don't have to be present. You start turning into something that's not civilized, that's <laughs> even with all that knowledge in your head. <laughs> so Islam is just a common sense. Yeah. Islam is good judgment. Yeah. Islam is reality. Islam is not a religion that you have to read about. It is a religion that you have to live to know about. <laughs> I want to bring to our attention because it's important that we come before you that we have to share information to keep our mind knowing what is taking place in many, many levels of the society. I wanted to share this with you with a little more background, but I'm going to hurry through it because I think it's very, very important to leave you with this message. I recently took a journey to Italy and to France, and I attended conference, very, very important conference in Milan. And there were present certain scientists who are studying what we call the mechanisms of time. That they know that their time is up. Yeah. And the Vatican and the Gregorian calendar is being challenged from scientists that are gathering to discuss these issues. What they don't want to tell you is that in 1962, the Vatican brought it up on their agenda to change the calendar to correct the incongruity of their calendar because it was causing really people to go out of control because the time template of the Gregorian calendar was set up by the European people 
in order to make merchandise out of us right. and to make us work for them as a slave and as a beast, really. Yeah. So the mechanical trapping of European civilization has bound us in like EU means rope and rope to bind in right. to narrow our view and our ability to get out of the time zone that he has put us in. So he carried that philosophy out of Europe over to America. So when he came to America and found sophisticated civilization in Mexico, Mesoamerica, Central America, who had an exquisite knowledge of mathematics and astronomy and built their temples like our foreparents did in Egypt, which led then, of course, to people surmising that the Egyptians and the Maya, the Egyptians and the Toltecs, that they really were one people, but that they migrated from the same source of wisdom, but they established separate cultures, separate civilizations. But now the more and more that we are getting acquainted with our people around the world because transportation and technology is causing the world to shrink. Yeah. It's getting smaller and smaller, so the information highway is getting bigger and bigger, yeah. so that now you can take a little computer, right, that's and right. go into a website and line up with all of the developments that's happening in science right. and math and technology yeah. and history. So it says in the Bible that the devil came down, was thrown out of heaven, right? That's right. And he knoweth that he has but a short time. What is this short time that he's referring to? Yeah, he knows that his rule was based upon us being dead. Exactly. His rule was based yeah. upon keeping us dead. And if we start waking up to the knowledge of who we are, who God is, and who he is, then that's the short time that he has to, right. to, to, to yeah. So, Pope John II very smart pope. He really is not a dope. <laughs> we respect, and I'm just saying it because I don't want us to make him angry, because all of the world's religious leaders will come to respect and to honor us if we use the wisdom wisely. And that is what we are all about. And our tendency sometimes to make a little mockery or to say something in a kind of a sarcastic way comes out of the mistreatment that we have had by those people. But we do have to learn how to use the language in an intelligent way so that they will respond to us in common. That is true. So the Pope of Rome, what he did, in the Vatican, they proposed, as I said, 1962, to correct the calendar, because they realized that it was not in step with the frequency of the proper time. So when they came under the Pope's uh, guidance, the European first discovery of America, the European first discovery of America, with Christopher Columbus. So I thought it was very unusual that I was in Italy, uh, where Christopher Columbus started his campaign yes. and came across with the help of the Islamic scholars. I know a lot of you don't know that, but it's true. How did he learn about the maps and the cartology? Who were the people in Europe that had been in Spain for eight centuries? They were our forefathers, the Moors. And at that time, the black man and the Jews got along very, very well. In fact, they, they they contributed to the great scholarship of the universities at that time. But something happened that caused friction between the Jews that also were persecuted by the Christians too. And they had to take refuge in Islamic countries. Some of them in Yemen, some of them in Arabia, this is true. And some of them hid out in North Africa, in Morocco, Mauritania, and other countries where they had to flee. Well, we don't have time to go into the little fine points of history on that, but that's not the first time that the Jews had to flee, or members of that particular uh, race or people. But the point being is that the astrolog, the compass, all of that was highly developed 
by the new Muslim uh, nation that had come out of the desert and had occupied the northern part of um, Africa and also down into sub-Sahara Africa. And so that movement of scholarship came to occupy Spain and was finally developed universities, Alhambra, and many places in Spain in which this knowledge and wisdom was known. In fact, Europeans were living in the Dark Ages. And they were living much like beasts. They didn't know anything about sanitation. The bubonic plague, as you know, broke out there. They did not know anything about the proper uh, food to eat. And you know, many of them on the ships got scurvy because they didn't know that linen, vitamin C, they were in a terrible condition. They were in a terrible condition. And it was the Renaissance came about because of the infusion of Islam. Right. But the Cid, El Cid, and the Christian, the popes, knew that they had to dominate the rule during this particular period of time. So they had to use that scholarship in order to help them to map out their navigational plan. Yeah. Because it was our scientists and our fathers who had that knowledge. And some, they tell me, Moors were on board that ship, those ships, with Columbus. Yeah. And they came over here to the Western world. So the whole idea is that they were given this time to rule. So they have a short time to rule. So they set up a rule that was opposite to the divine law. You see, it's so much against the divine law because Catholic a priest cannot even marry. Muhammad said half the religion is marriage. Yeah, that's right. Is that right? right. So if, if, if a priest does not have the right to have a wife, then his knowledge is sterile. Right. Because it takes the other half. to help to bring out the yeah, wisdom of yeah, man. That's right. our teaching. Right. Rabbi Elijah Muhammad said that a man cannot mature in his wisdom without the woman. That's right. That's right. So you go back and we say, oh yes, that's right, my mother has a baby, and the baby goes around nine months, then it's time for the birth of the baby, then of course, naturally, the mother takes care, feeds the baby, off her breast two years, and then uh, she can take care of him up to the age of 12, then the man has to come in. But you know what? I think we have it a little bit mixed up. Wow. That is true, but the woman doesn't stop there. That's right. She has to continue to evolve and nurture because that is her nature. That's right. That she must continue to evolve the community. That is what woman represents society. Community, order, harmony, peace, comfort. So that's missing in the society today. Right. People instead are killing and mugging their mothers and the elders and the grandmothers. No respect for the woman. So that is why, brothers and sisters, the earth is really responding because she's called mother. So mother earth herself is responding to the mistreatment as our women are responding to the mistreatment. Right. and all of his colleagues master planned through the Jesuit priests and other missionaries who came to America when they found these high civilized areas, civilization areas, pyramids and cultures, they went about to destroy all the manuscripts so that there only remained fragments that they stole and took to France and also to Germany and put in the Berlin Museum put in the Louvre in France, all of these documents about the high civilization were absolutely destroyed. But this is why they built, like our ancient forefathers did the same, built these monuments in Egypt. That one day, with a higher knowledge of the science of divine and the mathematics and the astronomy, we would come to see in the stone that they couldn't do. So in the stone are the hieroglyphs, right? So there are scientists, the French and the German and the British, all started deciphering these hieroglyphics. Right. And then they discovered, wow, 
this uh, Maya language, for example, was being utilized by the Russians, I don't know if you know that, behind the Iron Curtain in order to crack galactic codes for their space travel. They found something in those codices and in those codes that led them to make breakthroughs in the modern world of science and astronomy. Okay? So now, to be justified in bringing one people to an end and bringing in a new civilization, it is necessary for us to pull out the dirty laundry. It is necessary for us to retrace our footsteps and get a full and comprehensive knowledge of history before we start criticizing and charging that we, Muslims, who, who mean surrender to Almighty God Allah, are teaching hate. A Muslim cannot teach hate if he loves God. If you love God, you cannot hate. But you can and must be responsible for studying and sharing the truth. So those who want you to think that we are teaching hate are those who do not want to know, or you to know, the exploitation that they have made of, of us, and not as a civilized man, but as an uncivilized man. And we have been chosen, women and our men, as the new teacher of a new civilization. So finally, I wanted to wrap this up. I have every book here, and I'm going to use every one before I close. <laughs> is that now the Ponti, the Ponti established a Pontifical Academy of Science. And guess where that Academy of Science is located? They built an observatory in the state of Arizona, in Tucson, Arizona. Near Tucson, Arizona is a great observatory called Kip Peak, or I think I'm saying that right. Kip Peaks or Kip's Peak Observatory. And if you visit that observatory, you will find before you enter inside of the museum, they have a big stone hieroglyph of the Maya language. And in a glass case, they said, these are the words because we just saw it a year ago, it says, the Maya calendar is more accurate than the Gregorian calendar. So the question is, if it is more accurate, then why isn't it being used? Why isn't it being studied? Because it would take the devils off of their time. And it would put us back into the time of the original people. So they're not too excited about the study of the Maya calendar right now. So that conference that I attended in Italy was going into the prophetic cycle and history of that calendar through the Maya prophecies. And the Maya prophecies, as I'm saying, as a world, one world going out and a new world coming in, we have to have, as the Holy Quran says, all the books in the last day so that every people and every tribe and every leader will be bearing witness from the root of their knowledge that the end has come. And so the new discoveries in mathematics and astronomy are now coming so fast that the average person cannot even keep up with them. And this is part of the coding of the Holy Quran. All of these numbers that we've been talking about, the 19 and the significance of the 19, and Minister Farrakhan's study guide, talking about the number 19 and Mary and the women and, and the sign of all of that that we went into in part in our program. The woman clothed in the sun, 12th chapter, Revelation, with the star of a crown of 12 stars and the moon in deep, deep side. We don't even have time to go into it. But basically, the woman is the clock and is the gauge of time because God created her from the likeness of himself as the first act of creation. 
after himself so that she could keep a record and calculate on what was going on in the darkness as you have your room calculating time to give birth to a baby. In the 12th point of what the Muslims believe, we have it written that the Mahdi or the Messiah is God in person. Is that true? And furthermore, we believe that there is no God but Allah. Now notice it's number 12. The Honorable Elijah Muhammad taught us that Master, the, the Master, came. And when he came, he established the base of his study with us on the basis of the number 12. So that number square is the number of first fruit converts, 144,000. Yeah, right. And that if he can get 144,000 to shape up and do right, then they would be separated away at a certain time taken out and put under another training. I'm telling you these things because it's time. And the training of that 144 would be to return and to cue the nations of the earth into righteousness. That is why our lessons are so important. When we read them, they're all talking about strong, high science. Squaring the square wood, the cubicle wood, right. because we are the master builders. Right. And we have to have the knowledge of how to build any people who are subject to another people who know mathematics will always be slaves right. of that people who know higher mathematics. Right. So, therefore, he wants to put into our mind a new mind that takes us beyond the prophets and the messengers, and the prophecies, and all of that. When the Honorable Elijah Muhammad left, we called him the messenger of God. And that is correct, he brought us a message. But we don't understand the higher wisdom. So he couldn't tell us that he was going away to be made into the kind of master that our foreparents were when we mastered the universe. And he would be the firstborn of a new civilization, the first Adam died, to give way for the second Adam. So our fall from the garden of Eden does have something to do with the woman. And at the same time, it doesn't have anything to do with the woman. It has something to do with God. He is the root origin of the heavens and the earth. And he, according to the Quran, called upon himself mercy. It says it like he ordained mercy upon himself. Why? Because he knew that the imperfection in us would cause God to destroy us unless he had the mercy and the love which is written over every surah of the Quran. Why it is there, Bismillah, Rahman, Rahim? And the histories are given to us, right? The characteristics of our people, right? That's right. So therefore, this study of the nation of Islam, brothers and sisters, is life itself. Yeah. It is not based upon the old world, but it's based upon the vision of a new world order that you read as the messianic kingdom. Yeah. It is the nation of Islam under the sign of Mary, the mother of Jesus and her son, who were to become the community of a righteous people that would be qualified to take us into the establishment of a new world order on earth as it is in heaven, but not in heaven before we get to the earth. Whatever is in the heavens must manifest itself in our lives or it has no service for us. 
So where we're going now, brothers and sisters, and the way that I understand our minister, because that's the beat we have to be on. He gave us a Simon Million Man March, 1995. It was the eight steps of the atonement process. That's the second part of our subject, healing the wounds. How can we heal the wounds if we don't know the steps required in the process? The steps were outlined to us. And these eight steps of atonement he used graphically as musical notation to bring back harmony in the body you have to know the musical tone that you vibrate okay? the a tone is the orchestral sound for tuning up the orchestra that means tuning up the people of god and the conductor has his baton now the a tone goes into a B tone, C, D, E, F, G tone. And if we follow the process of the atonement, we learn that this scale of music is the number seven. Okay, Seven letters up to G. So that's the G force. The G force terminates a certain scale before we can reach the octave. That's right which is a doubling of both tones. Yeah. So then we hit the eighth tone, is that right? Yeah. So he gave us a perfect harmonic balance to bring out the music of our souls, to radiate and harmonize with love by being humble enough to say, I'm sorry. Oh, to be humble enough to say, I did something wrong. Will you forgive me? Then I have to admit that I really did it, and then I have to repent. Is that right? Yes. And then if I can repent, ultimately I have to resolve that note. Yes. And to resolve that note needs to come in complete peace and harmony and in union with the Almighty God of God. That's so right. stop playing games. It's so simple. We can't take these baby steps. We won't see the hereafter. The number of years from the Million Man March down to the G tone, that is a year for every note, we come out to the year 2001. Is that true? 2001. And because I don't want to take you too long into this lecture, I had many other thoughts. To share with you, but this one I will. Everybody has studied the Great Pyramid of Egypt, right? Everybody in the world imagine, well, that's the one last seventh wonder of the world. Leaving out of the old world means also numerically coming out of the power and the attraction and the hold on the incomplete, imperfect number six and going into the seventh. Okay, the number seven. Now, if this great pyramid, as many of the scientists have now discovered, contains within it history of a timeline that runs approximately 6,000 years, built in stone, and every single aspect of the work in that pyramid really represents people and a civilization. We spoke about the dragon standing at the foot of the baby, about to destroy that baby as soon as it was born. Look at our condition in America. We are like that woman in America that they, the dragon, whoever the dragon is, you can read it in scripture, but the dragon stands before the woman to take the baby. What is the baby? It is the birth of a new civilization that will go against the wicked civilization of their world. So if you study the pyramid, you find that when it was built, and I'm going to only hold you on this point, when it was built, there was a star that was aligned to the entrance of the pyramid on the 19th four stone. On the 19th four stone, 
the star that shone, that showed itself, or shine, that's the word I want, shine down the descending passageway was called the dragon star. The dragon star, or Alpha Draconis, or the even, I've, I've seen it written, the devil star. And that star took mankind, the dragon took mankind down into a pit at the bottom of the pyramid. That's the symbolism there. And the only way that we could prevent the complete fall is that Moses had to remove the impediment. And the impediment in the Great Pyramid is a big granite stone that none of the scientists have been able to remove up to the present hour. And the ascension takes us up to the Pleiades. And the Pleiades represent the women. In fact, it's called the Seven Systems. So to break the fall of our nation, we must have our women as fully prepared and qualified for a nation that can rise no higher than its one. That's right. Now, as I close, I want to share this with you from the study guide. Ready? Yes, <laughs> The Honorable Minister Farrakhan speaks about the 12th chapter of Revelation. He says, let us return to Revelation 12. A woman clothed in the sun. It could mean that she is pregnant, but it could also mean that she is wrapped in divine light. She has 12 stars in her crown. It could mean that the 12 major scientists have approved of this woman being in heaven. Standing on the moon means that she is standing on the world of the prophets. A woman would come forward and through that woman, a child would be born and that child would be Messiah. That child would be Mahdi. That child would manifest the presence of God coming from a woman. That woman is stylized in the Holy Quran as Maryam or Mary. Now that takes us to the root of the symbolism of the female side. There is a masculine side to Mary as well. The prophets and the messengers were always stylized in scriptures in the feminine gender as women. So there is no big eyes in women's ears. <laughs> we're all equal in the eyes of God. And so as I close, I'm going to bring to you one more reading. I can put everything the, the superior aspects of women. And this is a quote from a brother who also is talking about the 12th chapter of Revelation. So that means that women must be very, very special. <laughs> I want to read this because I thought the words were so clear. It is by Haki, um, is that Madhubu? You know them, right? Okay. Only fools limit their women. The full potential of a nation cannot be realized unless the full potential of its women is realized. A nation cannot grow without its women. The intelligence of a nation is reflected in its women who bear the children for the nation and are charged with the early education of the nation. A nation cannot have intelligent women unless the women are treated intelligent and given much love. As the modern sage Vivekananda says, he's from India, the barometer to the progress of a nation is the treatment of its women. There is no chance for the welfare of the world unless the condition of women is improved. The prevailing attitudes towards women, the form builders of the world, are indicative of a nation's level of mental and psychological evolution. If the growth and development of the vehicle that gives birth is frustrated and restricted, then that which it brings to life will reflect these oppressive conditions. To limit the growth of women is to retard the evolution of the planet. Achievements of global import are seldom made in countries where women are deprived of basic human rights. Many people give credit for the humanization of the world 
to the emergence of the Master Jesus and other great prophets. We often forget that these awesome personalities came through the womb of powerful women. Women who were respected and treated in a manner that enabled them to create the pure internal atmosphere that facilitated the conception and birth of spiritual giants. The primary challenge of today's women is to form a spiritual collective and create the mental and spiritual atmosphere that will accommodate the vision of a unified planet. The restoration of the kingdom of heaven on earth will manifest when the seeds of this utopian idea are clothed and nurtured by the magnetic substance that only women possess. That America was chosen as the place in which this great work was to be initiated is indicated by the Statue of Liberty, which of course we know is a woman. This powerful symbol reminds us that women are the torchbearers that will help us free the female element in both sexes and liberate its imprisoned splendor. At some point in our development, we will free our minds from the foolish notion that women are the door through which sin entered the world and will realize that all women are expressions of the feminine aspect of God. Eve, Job's spouse, and Lot's wife represent the undeveloped feminine principle in human personality. While the woman in Revelation the reality of truth, everything is bearing witness that God is, cannot be so simply stated as being of one sex gender, that there are principles of femininity and principles of masculinity from whence we derive our characteristics that is pregnant within the essence of the Almighty Creator for whom he came forth, studied himself, and found the woman. We have to understand as we step into our new training and our new education, we have to go deeper into the science, into the divine wisdom that was taught to us by the master and don't go astray into the world that is trying to take us down with them. They know that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, his teachings and the work of the Honorable Minister Farrakhan in 100% Correct, 100,000% on time yeah. is right and exact. Yeah. And let us walk with the Honorable Minister Farrakhan because he is taking us back to our senses and he is taking us back to our God. So I thank you. I could go on and on. I have a very good spirit this afternoon. Thank you. time I would like to bear witness that without the assistance of the male, we are incomplete. So I would be remiss in my duty if I did not respect the brother who the Honorable Louis Farrakhan has chosen to represent him in the Western region. And that is Prime Minister and Minister Tony Muhammad. So I would like to ask him to come forward at this time and to continue on into today's program. Thank you. I tell you that. Thank you. the merciful, I bear witness that there is no God but Allah who came to us in the person of Master Farad Muhammad. And we thank him for raising up in our midst that Georgia-born black man by the name of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. And we thank him for backing that one in our midst today, that one who is, in my opinion, the greatest defense attorney of the oppressed, 
here in the hells of North America and all over the earth. That man is the Honorable Minister Louis Farr. I greet you all again in their names. Asalaamu Alaikum. Brothers and sisters, you would have to help me again and let's give Mother Tanetta another round of applause. <laughs> We are eternally grateful, Mother Tynetta, for your wisdom, for your guidance, and more importantly, your example. We pray to Allah that the words that he blessed to come from you today, that we would be that kind of people who hear and obey. Is that right? That we begin to move out on truth, no matter what vessel God brings it to us through. And we want you to know that we will try as Muslim, Mother Tynetta, to get back to our wisdom, back to the basics. So next week, you all know that we have an exam on lesson number one, is that right? Questions one through seven, hoping to bring in that G force that'll get us through one through 14. So next Sunday, be here at 11 a.m. where you will be given an examination you will have to be able to write and recite question and answer one through seven. Because lesson number one lays the base for our work today. Is that right? How many of you are here for your first time? Would you raise your beautiful hand? All of our first time guests. Raise them high. Let's welcome our first time guests. Come on, Muslims. Y'all can do that for that. How many of you believe what you heard today to be the truth and good for oppressed people? Would you raise your hand? Then give yourself a round of applause for having that kind of understanding. Given the fact that Mother has brought us the mathematical time and what must be done, you should be like we are, tired and sick and tired of being out of the loop. And now it's time for us to come to join on with the bold and brilliant leadership of a man that will get us back to ourselves, back to our God, and out of the condition that we find ourselves in. I believe that the final call that the Honorable Louis Farrakhan is bringing to us as an oppressed people, he is our last chance. How many of you want to learn more about yourself and join on with bold leadership and free the God in you so you can help us to free our people. Everyone that's ready to do that, stand up. Everyone that want to join on and join on with make a stand today. Is there anyone else that would like to take that step? Is there anyone else that would like to learn more about yourself? Stand up. Is there anyone else that would like to join on with your nation? so that we can resurrect our people. Well, we are told that when one stand up, that the angels in heaven are rejoicing right now because of one. We are glad that it happens to be our sister because it could be that through her womb, a savior will come to help us all out of the condition. So would you please come forward? Mother Tanelli, if you would grace us. And on behalf of the Honorable Louis Farquhar, we would like for Mother Tynetta to shake your hand on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farquhar. Would we get her name? Wonderful. Dr. Mary Morgan? We got a doctor in the house. Dr. Mary? Dr. Mary, would you place your family? Brothers and sisters, this is not just Mary. This is Dr. Mary. Do we accept Dr. Mary? Yes, sir. Do you? Yes, sir. Will you help us to teach us everything you know that's good? Yes, sir. Will you respect her? Yes, sir. Will you help protect her? Yes, sir. Brothers, will you help to elevate her? Yes, sir. Will you give your life for her? Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. Would you take a life for her? Yes, sir. Sisters, will you be patient with her? Yes, sir. Will you accept her as she is? Yes, sir. And help her 
to be the woman that God would like for her to be. Beyond your personality. Then Sister Mary, welcome to the nation of Islam. For all you do, this nation is for you. Give her another round of applause. Sister Mother, I see another sister. Sister, would you come forward? Come on, let's give the mighty black woman a round of applause. All praise to your love. Sister Phyllis, would you face your family? Beautiful black woman, is that right? Yes, do we accept Sister Phyllis? Yes, I mean, do you really accept her? Yes, will you help us to teach us everything you know that is good? Yes, sir. Will you help us to protect her? Yes, sir. Elevate her? Yes, sir. Would you do that? Yes, sir. Sisters, will you accept her as she is? Yes, will you help her to evolve into the woman that God would like for her to be? What if she was hungry and without it? All you had was a bowl of beans, sister. How much could she get? Well, you come on and get your half, sister, so you can help us to make a hole. Welcome, sister, to the nation of Islam. Let me give these two mighty women a round of applause. Come on, you can do better than that. A long white box. A long white box. That only means God is the greatest. Brothers and sisters, I don't know if you was out with us last night, but from Mother Tynetta, and we're certainly thankful to have with us as well another of our mother from the faith and of the faith, we have Sister Mother Evelyn Muhammad. She's with us today. Let's give her a round of applause because at her feet is nothing but wisdom. We got plenty mothers with plenty wisdom. All praise the love to a lot. From these two women have come forth beautiful children. You'll be acquainted with them in a few days. Thank you, mothers. Is it okay that we proceed and go on? Also visiting with us is our national MGT sister capital, also known in the Constitution as what? National Directress of the Women, is that right? Just had a test on that two weeks ago. Is that right? She's also a mother to be, carrying a Jesus in her womb. That's why we have to be careful what you say around her, because she's carrying life. And she's with us today, flew in from Chicago, so we want to fly her in, wrapped with the love of Moss number 27 and the Western region with us, Sister Captain Aisha Muhammad, would you please stand and be recognized? Show us some love, brothers and sisters. Our national Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Also, we have in the Holy Quran, there's a surah called the Allies. You cannot have enough allies when you're fighting against the beast. And you gotta have the kind of allies that when it's time for us to really open fire spiritually on our enemy, some countries will bring the stealth bomber, some will be the ground troopers. Somebody gotta have the communications. And we can't depend on the devil's communication because we've seen what happens when his satellites go out. Your beepers don't work, is that right? But visiting with us today is our sister, Sister Farida. She is our Iranian Muslim sister. She's always with us. One of our allied forces, would you please stand and be recognized? Let's welcome our Islamic sister from Iran. Honored to have your presence with us today. Thank you. Try not to leave nobody out. We have many of our MGT sisters from around the region, with all of our sisters from out of town who are visiting with us from around the region, would you please stand and let us recognize you from all of the cities of the western region. Come on, show me your sisters of love. Thank you for gracing us with your presence. Thank you. I'm encouraging all of you in our multi-purpose room upstairs Mother Tynetta is also 
you know, in my opinion, God is using her mind to help design clothing for the women. Since the white men, the, the French, I mean, the guys from Europe is undressing you, God has to put someone on earth that will dress you. Now you say in the Christian church that you want to put on your white robe and you want to walk all over God's heaven. Well, if you don't walk on earth like that, you ain't going to walk in heaven like that. You cannot be a hoochie mama in heaven. So you might as well stop being a hoochie woman on earth. Is that right? If you dress like the woman of God on earth, you bring out God in the man. So upstairs is some of her fashions. I wish we had some on the stage where we could show you. But please, for those of you who would like to purchase, stay away from that purple and gold garment that sister was wearing last night. I'm getting that for my wife. In fact, will y'all put that one up right now? But uh, mother, you have your books with you as well? You may have left your books. We can check. If your books are here, would you? Well, we have, we work in her very hard. But uh, she, if her books are here, she will have a book sign, and immediately we'll set up a table right here. You know, please, brother, sister, if you can purchase a book, it would be helpful. You know, but please, we'll have a book sign if the books are here. All right? But please go upstairs and see her fashions, and I'm telling you, you'll be mesmerized by the beautiful colors. Now with that, brothers and sisters, we're going to ask you for a little charity. Now, on Tuesday, we're having a big protest here in Los Angeles. One of our Christian preachers out of the Catholic Church, Father Flavor, who happens to be a Caucasian man who loves and supports the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, everywhere he goes. In fact, accepts wisdom. What? Coming from the Honorable Louis Farrakhan, a white man who stands with him and loves his explanation, his exegesis of Jesus and Mary. Well, you know, you got to love truth more than skin color. We're going to join him this Tuesday. We're going to protest this hideous show called Jerry Springer because Jerry Springer is making a mockery of black, poor, and oppressed people. we got to get him off of the airways, and with our unity, we can force him to get out of this way of expressing how we should solve our problem by fighting it. Many of us have started tuning in to Jerry Springer, waiting on who's going to win, and I'm telling you, this will be Tuesday, 11 a.m. Everyone that would like to go, the Honorable Louis Farrakhan would like for us to go in numbers and show the networks that in our unity, we're going to start bringing some of these big giants down. So on Tuesday, that's at 11 a.m., 100 Universal City Plaza, University City, California, we will be protesting right outside the Universal Studios. All of the family be at the mosque at 9.30, and we will